We are continuing our discussion on the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic and new case numbers are slowing somewhat, but the level of transmission is still high due mostly to the Omicron variant, both throughout the country and here in Orange County. Many residents are questioning what we should do next. So what does all of this mean for you? Well, on this special edition of Healthy Connections, we're going to get an up to date look at where we are as a community dealing with this pandemic. Let's get an update from our state medical professionals and joining me is Alvina Chu, director of the Division of Infectious Diseases with the Florida Department of Health here in Orange County. Alvina, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me again. So Omicron is upon us. Um, how are we doing when it comes to the numbers in the state of Florida and here in Orange County? Well, as you mentioned, Omicron is the dominant strain circulating currently here in Orange County residents. And we are encouraged that, uh, I'm happy to tell you that over the last two weeks, we've seen a decline in the number of cases and also a decline in all of the indicators um, as far as uh, immediate indicators go. So a decline in, a decline in um, uh, the number of new cases and in the percent positivity. Um, although, uh, while I can say, I'm happy to say that, we are still classified as a high transmission. So we're still in the red. So over the threshold of 100 per 100,000 and greater than 10% positivity. So as of um, this morning, our incidence was 1,000 um, per 100,000 population and the percent positivity for the seven day average was at about uh, 28%. So what's causing the numbers to come down? Is it that everybody is pretty much getting it or is it because of the vaccination rates or, or, or people's behavior is different? What, what, what are or a combination of all? It's, it's a combination of all of that. Um, so uh, th that is one part is so many people have gotten it that, uh, you know, it comes around once and then it's unlikely to come around again, but we'll see. Um, so this is the part that we're going to keep an eye out on. Um, so while some of the numbers have come down as far as the new infections and new cases go, I will mention that within the next several weeks and maybe a month or two, we will still see an increase in the number of hospitalizations and deaths. And this is because we know that these hospitalizations and deaths and these severe outcomes, they do increase um, and they lag um, after the cases occur. So I just wanted to put that part out there, but uh, not necessarily, potentially we have crossed the peak. So uh, there seems to be a lot more children who <laughs> are being affected by um, the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic and, and their, the spread of the Omicron particularly. Are children more um, susceptible for this variant or is it just the fact that they're in school and, and people have let their guards down? Well, it's, it's a number of factors. So one part of it is just the sheer volume of the numbers of cases. And so children haven't necessarily been affected um, as an age group um, greater than what we saw previously. So usually um, every day, the proportion of cases that are in pediatric infections is usually somewhere around, like in the five to 14 age group, it's usually around 10%, 10 to 12, maybe 13. And so this proportion has not changed However, because there's so many more cases occurring, um, there will be this increase in pediatric infections, although the proportion that's affected remains the same. So it's, it's a volume. Part of that is a volume issue. One part of, um, and one part of this factor also is that um, there are proportionally, there's fewer children vaccinated in our county than say in other age groups. So we have very high vaccination rates in our 65 plus population and relatively low vaccination rates in our um, under 18 population. A lot of people are starting to realize that uh, science <laughs> is not math. Um, science actually evolves and changes and we have to change our behaviors. Is there something that we need to do differently with this Omicron variant that we didn't with the original um, and uh, Delta variant? So, you know, not necessarily anything different. I think we just still need to keep up our vigilance and, and maintain the pandemic precautions uh, where we can. So 
as as with all infectious diseases, you know, there are ways that we can reduce us getting an infection. Um, a couple of ways are the pandemic precautions. So wearing a mask to help contain um, respiratory droplets, that helps reduce transmission. Also practicing good hand hygiene and then also watching your distance, you know, maintaining good physical distance between people helps reduce infections. And how are testing efforts going um, statewide for um, people who are, you know, getting the sniffles, not 100 percent sure whether they have the Omicron, which is kind of a kind of a thing that you're hearing people say? Um, are, are people still getting tested? Yeah, we're still seeing people um, get tested. So the the volume of um, tests that are being done uh, within Orange County has decreased a little, some since the holidays. You know, a lot of people needed some testing before they went to do some kind of travel. But um, but we the we maintain the volume of tests and people are still getting tested. And we still, Orange County government still have, maintains those three testing sites. Um, and you can find the hours and the locations on the OCFL.net website. Since the uh, advent of the Omicron um, variant, the CDC has revised a lot of its recommendations for um, both um, boosters as well as for quarantine time. What are those recommendations now? So for um, based on some of the cases that we're seeing and the rapid increase with the Omicron, there was some there were some adjustments to the recommendations for people to get their booster slightly earlier. So now the recommendation is that it, when you are eligible after you've completed the primary series for the Pfizer and the Moderna to get a booster at five months. Um, and then if you had the Johnson and Johnson to still get that booster at two months for isolation. So isolation and quarantine, the the basic premise still remains the same about um, keeping away from others if you are sick, and then also if you have a known exposure, um, looking out for symptoms and, and removing yourself from others during a quarantine period um, to prevent trans to help prevent transmission. So, so it's still essentially a 10-day isolation period. We just emphasize the first five days because we know that's when you are most likely to be shedding the most virus and then to maintain another five days of cautious behavior. So wearing your mask and watching your distance and separating away from others if you are sick or if you're positive. You know, as you move around the county, you can kind of see that some people think that the pandemic is over. How do we communicate to our friends, family, neighbors that this is still an active, ongoing issue that we really need to be vigilant about? So I think part of it is uh, incorporating these measures, which we call pandemic precautions, but really are any good precautions to prevent infectious diseases into our everyday life or sort of into our new normal. You know, um, we've seen decreases in influenza. This is normally influenza season and also norovirus season, um, which is classic during the winter um, or the colder months and during the holidays. And so we've seen decreases in these diseases as well while we've been practicing the pandemic precautions. And so these measures help prevent or help protect us in general from other infectious diseases. And so I'd like to emphasize that continuing these practices is a good thing for all of us, kind of all the time. Um, as far as the pandemic goes, it's it's hard to, you know, we've been at it a long time. So it's, it's hard to maintain this um, increased vigilance. But I think if we're mindful about, um, you know, maintaining good hand hygiene and cautious who are around, especially if the people are sick, you know, stay at home or stay away from others. And if we have vulnerable people on our lives, being careful around them um, would be what our message would be. Well, Alvina, thank you so much. We always appreciate you um, spending time with us and taking uh, time out of your busy day to keep us informed. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. And we'll be right back with more. Stay with us. Let's continue our discussion with our local medical professionals. And joining us is Dr. Yolanda Martinez, Director of Orange County Health Services Department. Dr. Martinez, thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for um, inviting me again. Always, always. So are we starting to see some relief from the Omicron variant? And if so, what do you, what do you think is behind uh, the numbers starting to trend downward? 
Yes, we are. Um, I think uh, not only locally, but nationally, the numbers have started to go down. Um, we have seen a lot of testing. So I think people have become more aware of the importance of testing. So at least in our sites, we have seen uh, the, the amount of testing has been tremendous, and, and that is good. The percentage of positivity has been um, high, although it has start, started to go, go down now a little bit. Over the last week, we had about a 28% uh, positivity rate, which is still pretty high. Um, I think uh, the the reason for that is, uh, as I mentioned, that people are becoming more uh, aware of the importance of testing. And once they become aware of their um, rate, uh, whether they're positive or not, they're, they're taking actions to prevent it for, from continuing to spread. And also the fact that more people are getting vaccinated, not in the amounts and the numbers that we would like, but uh, people are still reaching out for the vaccines. And tell us about uh, Orange County's uh, efforts to monitor wastewater. What what is how does that work, and and what does it tell us? Well, you know, it's a, it's a marvelous way of predicting and becoming aware of the virus. This was launched by the CDC. Uh, back in the fall of 2020 to try to predict where in a community or, or to notice before the, the testing noticed it, uh, if people were positive. And for example, in our case, uh, we were starting to notice people with the Omicron virus at least a week before we started to see the, the positivity rates and the confirmation in the testing. And the reason for that is that people shed uh, the virus, the RNA of the virus in their feces. So it's captured by the water and then it helps uh, with uh, preparation and mitigation efforts for, for the um, coronavirus. And of course, vaccines remain uh, a, a main way for us to, to continue to fight this, this pandemic. And tell us about underserved populations and how we can ensure that they actually have access to the vaccines as well. Well, we continue to operate our site at Barnett Park, which is open seven days a week from nine to five. Uh, the Department of Health uh, continues to operate uh, to a certain extent their mobile vaccination unit. I got my shot unit uh, in partnership with the county uh, government. And uh, the pharmacies are also providing vaccines, which is very helpful for those individuals that might not be able to go, for example, to Barnett Park, uh, which I said, like I said, it's open seven days a week from nine to five. Um, so there are some avenues. Uh, the schools were also doing some vaccinations in their campuses to the children and in the evenings for the families, for the parents. So um, there, there are some options in the community. Right now, our vaccination rate remains um, at 42 percent for completed uh, series of vaccines for individuals five and over. So we still have a little bit of work to do to protect the entirety of our county. And Dr. Martinez, here in Orange County, we've had some temperatures that have dipped into the 40s at night. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everyone I know has the sniffles. How do we tell that, know whether or not we should go and get a test um, if we have the seasonal sniffles because it's been a little colder than normal for us here, or, um, it, or if we have, uh, you know, the coronavirus? How do we know what we should do when it comes to just a simple sniffle? Well, um, we know that 99% of those that become infected with coronavirus today have Omicron. We know that Omicron is very, very contagious. And since it mimics and has the same symptoms as a, a, clue, a flu or the sniffles, I think it is always important if you're getting some of those symptoms to go and get tested. It's easy, simple, is accessible, and it will prevent you from spreading it uh, to other individuals. And most importantly, if it's just started, for you to take care of yourself and uh, you know take the precautions that you need to to make sure that you're well and you're you're going to be healthy. Dr. Martinez, thank you so much for being with us today. It's always great to have you, and uh, thank you for, inf for keeping us informed from the front lines of this pandemic. Thank you very much for inviting me. And it's always a pleasure to talk with you. And we'll be right back with more. Stay with us. We've heard from a variety of leaders today trying to keep us informed about the coronavirus. From local government, the medical community who's on the front lines dealing with this pandemic, and organizations who continue to serve our community. And of course, we are always here to help you keep making those healthy connections. Stay safe.